Sometimes teams get lucky and they pay a guy who puts up absolute superstar numbers for them, despite being on a budget of a contract. Sometimes that guy with the superstar contract plays like a guy who should be on a minor league deal. Baseball's funny in just the way that it works with players and their production. Today I wanted to talk about the 5 most impactful free agent signings early on this season, but real quick, if you could make sure to subscribe, I make videos like this daily. But for this list, the amount of money they make is not being taken into account. I am looking for who has made the biggest impact on the respective club with their play. I'll be looking at the team records as well as each player's wins above replacement numbers. I'm also going to stick with one player per team, just in case there is two players on a team, just keep it a little interesting. At number 5, I got Ronaldo Lopez for the Atlanta Braves. So far this season, he's accumulated 1.7 war and 7 starts. During this span, he's also working with a 1.34 ERA, which is 4th best in baseball from starting pitchers. Last year he did well with the 3.27 ERA, but the thing is, he worked out of the bullpen. He came into the league as a starting pitcher and was predominantly in that role from the time he entered the league up until about 2021, then he moved to the bullpen. From 2021 until last year, he came out of the pen exclusively. The reason he is so impactful is he made a seamless transition from the pen to the rotation, which is not always the easiest thing to do. And the Braves especially needed him since Spencer Strider is missing the year and the rotation is not as solid as it could be, but Ronaldo is anchoring and he's really making up for Strider's absence. First year signing, Ronaldo Lopez has been nothing short of spectacular. And the thing is, the 30 year old is on year one of his three year $30 million contract, so the Braves better get used to this. Next up, the four spot goes to Seth Lugo of the Kansas City Royals. He is another case of a pitcher who went from the bullpen to the rotation. In 2021 and 2022, he did not make any starts, but last year he made 26 starts for the Padres. So far in 10 starts for the Royals, he's been their ace. He is a 1.79 ERA with a 2.3 war and a 7-1 record when he starts. Lugo is 34 and on the first year of his 3-year $45 million deal. I have him here in the 4 spot because he's part of the great Kansas City rotation. And the thing is, Kansas City lost 100 games last year. And this current team doesn't look like that even happened because they have a 29-19 record. They are 10 games over 500 for the first time since 2015 and Lugo has helped them win 7 of those. Given that he started 26 games last year and tossed 146 innings with a 3.57 ERA, I believe he could also keep up the solid pitching all year as long as he stays healthy. For the 3 spot, we have our first position player and that is Jurix and Profar. Profar is currently on a 1 year $1 million deal and despite the low price tag, he's playing like an MVP candidate. He has an insane slash line of a 335 average with a 424 on base percentage and only 164 at bats. He has also accumulated 1.7 war and hit 7 homers. Although he has less war than Seth Lugo, I ranked him higher because he's an everyday player that could play almost every single position on the field. He's a plug in and play utility guy that any team would love to have, and some team will in matter of fact be giving him more than $1 million next year. He is already one of the best hitters on a Padres team that is 7 games out of first place, sitting at 25 and 24. Not only is he one of the best hitters in the San Diego, he's one of the best hitters in baseball this year. The Padres got an absolute steal with signing Jerks and Profar, and I bet Will Smith definitely regrets firing him up after calling him irrelevant. Speaking of betting, that brings us to our 2 spot, where I have Shohei Otani. Otani in the 1 spot could be pretty interchangeable considering they have the same war. But my decision ultimately comes down to the fact that the Dodgers were going to win that division with or without Otani. Otani continues to be the best player on the planet this year, because in 187 at bats, he is hitting 353 with a 423 on base percentage. He's also hit 13 home runs and stole 11 bases. He has 3 war already and that will only continue to climb. The craziest part for me is Otani will be pitching next year and hitting. Sometimes we forget that, but that's only going to elevate the Dodgers even further. Otani's dominance on the bump could not be forgotten because that guy is insane and it's only a matter of time until he wins the Cy Young award to go pair along with his MVPs. Right now, the Dodgers are on pace to win over 100 games and have the second most wins in the National League with a record of 32-17. and 17. Otani is definitely the best free agent and is worth every single deferred penny, but the thing is, I don't have him as the most impactful because to me, that belongs to Shota Imanaga. Imanaga takes the one spot for me due to how dominant he's been so far in his first MLB season. This guy is leading the races for the NL Cy Young and the NL Rookie of the Year. There hasn't been a pitcher that started this strong since Fernando Valenzuela in the 80s. The 30 year old rookie has been the best starting pitcher in all of baseball throughout his 9 games started. In that span, he's 5-0 with a bewildering .84 ERA. 
He has also accumulated 3 war, which is tied for how much Otani is generated. The Cubs narrowly missed out on the playoffs last year, and from Imanaga's dominance, he is helping them stay on track to make it this year. The Cubs are 2 games out of first place with a record of 26-22, and 22, but at this point, you could almost chalk up any Imanaga start as a win for the Chicago Cubs. His presence for the Cubs has made a huge impact on the squad, and he will for years, because he's on year 1 of a 4 year deal that is worth $53 million. I just had to put him at 1 given how close the NL Central has been compared to the NL West and how dominant he has been. Otani is obviously much better than Imanaga, but the presence Imanaga has so far throughout his early starts is just, he looks unbelievable and he's helped the Cubs win so many more games in a tight division. As I said, the Dodgers were going to dominate that division with or without Otani. They still got Mookie Betts. Freddie Freeman too. This is my list for the 5 most impactful free agent signings so far. It's obviously very early, and a lot of these guys could climb up the list, fall off, or guys could even come on who they weren't on previously. You never know. But just from what I've seen so far early on in this season, this is what I put together. I'd love to know though, is there anyone I missed? Did I get it right? Let me know in the comments below, I read them. Thank you for watching and make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I'll see you guys later.